evening, everyone. Welcome to Windham Watch. I'm your host, Mary Griffin. And my guest this evening is a wonderful young man, Ian Freeman, and he's a candidate for governor. Nice to meet you today. Hi, Mary. It's nice to meet you. Yeah. Well, you just told me his age, and I was flabbergasted because he, he he's young looking, but he's a little bit older. But uh, can I say your age? Sure. That's well, fine. I think he told me he's thir 36, but That's right. if you look at him, everybody, he looks 24. <laughs> so we'll have to get your secret. Um, I guess it's brushing my teeth and taking care oh, of myself. you're a handsome yeah. young man, so welcome you to the show. Thank you. It's very nice. Now, you're a co-chair of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. Now, that's right. Now, that you know, intrigues me because what is the Liberty Party? Well, the New Hampshire Liberty Party is a, a group of people who formed a th kind of a third party, if you will, uh, that represents the idea of independence for New Hampshire. That's really the focus of the New Hampshire Liberty Party, but we also believe in uh, personal freedom and f liberty for the individual as well. Well, I'm going to talk to you about this, but uh, because course. I un don't understand, the l I'm a little bit older than you are, darling. Mm -hmm. But um, the liberty part—that's what I want to talk about. Because I think yeah. I've, I don't always agree w when we're at the state house. I, sometimes I have a few different views than you people do for the liberty, but uh, maybe it's because of my age. So we'll talk about well, that's okay. a really nice lady. But <laughs> if we all agreed, <laughs> life would be boring, wouldn't you're, it? You're, you're so right. Oh, yeah. you're a very nice man. Uh, nationally syndicated talk show radio talk radio host. That's correct. Right? I, I host a show called Free Talk Live. It's seven days a week. We're live out of uh, our Keene, New Hampshire studios, and we're heard on over 170 radio stations. And, and what do you talk about? Well, it's an open phone show, so uh, we will take phone calls from anyone who wants to call in, and they can talk about anything they want. Now, of course, if we, you know, we have to come into the studio with things to talk about, obviously. Oh, sure. So, mm -hmm. uh, so we like to talk about things involving your freedom. Well, I'm interested mm -hmm. in, in talking to you about the freedom because I, I guess because of my age, I'm I'm a little bit behind the times <laughs> of the Liberty Group, but I'm I'm interested. So let's put it that way. Of course. And let's talk pro peace. What does that mean? Uh, peace would be you know the absence of coercion or the absence of violence being used against you. So I'm in favor of peace on the in, uh, internal level because you have to have peace inside in order for it to manifest you outward. You and I would reality. get along fine. I think so. Oh my goodness, yes. Um, ballot access fairness. What does that mean? Well, some of the people uh, have been, uh, some people have been upset that I'm running as a, a Democrat uh, well, because... Well, we can't shoot everybody, you know, that we don't care for. <laughs> well, no, the reason why they don't like it is because they, they would say I'm not a true Democrat. In fact, three of the Democratic candidates recently refused to debate me and Derek Dextres, who are, th so there's five candidates running for governor. Three of them refused to debate us because we're not real Democrats, according to them. Well, what is the difference between... Uh, you know, your Liberty Party and Democrat, isn't that more or less in tune to one another? So the reason I chose to run as a Democrat is because it's too difficult in New Hampshire for third parties to get on the ballot. So I'll give you the exa an example here. Um, for state rep, you have to pay a $2 filing fee, mm -hmm. and then you get on the ballot. If you're a third party, so let's say you're a Green Party or Libertarian or mm -hmm. New Hampshire Liberty Party, then it's 150 signatures. When you get up to the governor level, it's a $100 filing fee for a Republican or a Democrat, but if you're the Libertarian or an Independent or whoever, it's 3,000 signatures. Well, why is that? Well, because for whatever reason, the Republicans and the Democrats don't seem, and this is an indictment against you or That's anything okay. like that, I, right? I love everybody. Right. Uh, the Republicans and the Democrats don't really want competition. They don't want to have more choices on the ballot, so they make yeah. it much more difficult for the third parties to get in. So to get 3,000 petition signatures either means you have to spend a lot of time, I mean a lot of time, trying to get those it's signatures. It's hard to get 3,000 signatures? Or you can hire someone. You can hire professional petition gatherers, and they were, this season they were charging four dollars per petition signature so you do the math that's thousands well, that's of dollars of that you have to pay just to run for office just to get on the ballot no. so i figured i'll pay a hundred dollars and i get to meet interesting people like you oh, and you're very kind, you know and have all kinds of fun conversations i don't think that's fair no it's that definitely they, not fair that. so that's what i would like to see well, is well, fair tell me, what is access. the reason for you to have three thousand signatures just because you're a liberty party what is you will, you'll have to ask whoever it was that made those rules oh. in the state house. Uh, you know, I would love to see that change to where anybody should be able to pay the two dollar fee or the hundred dollar fee, I depending. I feel the same way you do. I'm just right. what I'm trying to find out why would they do that? Well, if you actually, um, if you attend the elections committee, I'm not sure which committee that you sit on, but I don't I'm think you're on. I'm always a means. Right. So if you attend the elections committee hearings. 
whenever something is proposed to make ballot access more fair, the uh, Secretary of State uh, he, they sent his deputy in. I think his name is Scanlon. Yeah, Dave. Mm -hmm. uh, right. He comes in there and he argues against any changes whatsoever. And the what he uses as his excuse is, well, there'd be too many choices. People will be too confused. Oh. So as though if there were four or five choices instead of two, that that is oh, somehow a bad thing. Yeah, a and I think more, more choice is better. I think more choices are a good thing because oh. people need to hear more opinions and more solutions. We and need more that options. all through life. Absolutely, especially in politics. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see that 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 really makes me wonder about that because I think you, whether you're a Liberty Party or a Democrat Republican, it's all the same. I don't they're they're segregating you off. Well, I mean, I don't know if they're all the same. I mean, we have different beliefs on different things. That's why people join different uh, different political parties. And the Democrats are a more popular party out where I live, out in Keene. So yeah, ultimately, Keene, I chose yeah. to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I chose to join the Democratic Party. But if I could get ballot access fairly, I would be a New Hampshire Liberty Party mm -hmm. uh, member on the ballot. But well, it's maybe just that will that happen. Way. I hope so. I hope so too, it's because everything should be fair. Well, I know that there's usually one or two bills put in every session that proposes changes that might help in this way, but mm -hmm. again, it just gets shot down again and again. And I think last time it was like a 15-0 vote in the elections committee. So again, the Democrats and the Republicans oh. agree, we don't want more choices on the ballot. Oh, and I, I think see. that's I unfortunate. I don't serve on the election yeah. committee, but I have enough to do on my own committee. Right. But well, we'll see. I, I, I don't think that that's fair though to exclude you. So uh, I think- uh, if We agree. <laughs> yes, we do, so I'm surprised. <laughs> well, that's because I never understood that party. No, I have to ask you this because you could not swear allegiance to the federal government as the oath requires. Oh, you've and done your research. Okay, yeah. and what does that mean? Well, um, you know, so the federal government, I, I'm not a fan of them. I don't think they do good things. I think they hurt peaceful people. I think they uh, ruin people's lives here in the United States, not to mention around the world. The government, you yeah, the, the federal government mm -hmm. specifically um, around the world. You know, they, they're bombing innocent people in, in other countries, and so. I couldn't possibly swear allegiance to them because they're not doing good things in, in my mind. I would like to see New Hampshire be its own place to declare independence, just like we did hundreds of years ago from King George. It's mm -hmm. time that we do that again and do it on a peaceful basis, not with violence, mm -hmm. uh, but to just say, okay, well, thanks, but no thanks, goodbye. And uh, I think we could take care of ourselves just fine well, in New if Hampshire. You, if you could be, uh, you could, if you could get along with them, if you say that we, we you, you weren't supposed to get 3,000 signatures. Supposing you just a Liberty Party and you were elected, could, would you take the office then? I mean, I don't understand. Okay, so um, we might be mixing what we're, di what we're discussing here. So the 3,000 signatures is a state government requirement. The federal state government has no... Oh, I see. Okay. They don't That's have separate. any control over New Hampshire's ballot okay. access or mm -hmm. anything like that. So it's two different conversations. One's about the federal government controlling New Hampshire, right. taxing the people here, right. taking money from people in New Hampshire, and then giving it to their bureaucrats in the federal government, and then giving us a little bit back oh, to, I see. to the mm -hmm. state government. What's the benefit there? What, what is it that we're really getting from the federal government? It seems to me they're putting us in danger by having their wars all around the world, and they're just extracting our, our wealth and our resources okay, from yeah. us. And I don't see what the benefit is. I really don't. See, that's nice. A young man like yourself yeah. is figuring that all out, so yeah. I'm sure there are many more in your group? Uh, the New Hampshire Liberty Party is relatively small. I mean, we only have a few dozen members at this mm -hmm. point, but again, it's hard to make an impact as a political party in New Hampshire unless you're one of the main two parties. Because I think that it has gone on for so many years, because I know that when we're voting, we get a yellow sheet, I think, every morning that we're going to vote, mm -hmm. and from the Liberty Party. Ah, okay, that would be the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance. Mm -hmm. Different group. But same idea? S I wouldn't say exactly the same. No. Uh, I don't think the New Hampshire Liberty Party, or excuse me, the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, I don't think they take a position on New Hampshire declaring independence, oh, which I is see. what the New Hampshire Liberty Party is really all about. Oh, I see. But, but, but they're a great group. I support the New Hampshire yeah, Liberty yeah. Alliance. And sometimes I have agreed with them and sometimes I didn't, but I guess that's normal. Well, it's good that they're there because in most places, um, there is no group like that. In most mm -hmm. places, you mm -hmm. either hear from the Republicans or the mm -hmm. Democrats as mm -hmm. far as what their party thinks you should do. Yeah. So it's nice that you get a third choice here I, in New I, Hampshire. Well, I think I was just going to say we have the New Hampshire Republicans and Democrats, but then we have a third party that comes right. along with a different viewpoint 
So, uh, so it's nice to understand wh how they feel. Right, and they put a lot of work into that, I too. I think they really do. They're yeah. very nice, though. Mm -hmm. I have to say that. They're very polite. Um, they give us a, the copy of the sheet, and I, I go back and I say, well, I'm a little bit old, but I, maybe I'm learning. So You're never too old to No, I'm learning, learn so it's things. very nice. But let me ask you something. Why would New Hampshire be better off with no governor at all? Now, this fascinated <laughs> me. Why, why would you say that? Well, I don't really... I mean, the governor can do some good things here and there, but uh, she, at least the current one has stood in the way of a lot of uh, good legislation, mm -hmm. like uh, drug decriminalization, for instance, mm -hmm. cannabis. Um, and that's, I think, really sad because you know, we've got peaceful people here in New Hampshire who just want to use cannabis for their own personal reasons. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's for medical purposes. Maybe mm -hmm. it's for recreational purposes mm -hmm. to unwind after work or mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, she has refused, even though the state house has voted, and I didn't check your voting record, so I'm not sure right. about you on this, but um, the state house voted, like I think, 80% last time for decriminalization. Mm -hmm. The people of New Hampshire support it overwhelmingly, mm -hmm. and she shot it down because, well, she seems to be more allied with the police police chiefs than she does the people. Oh, but I to get see. back to your question, um, the state house can still pass legislation without the governor there. There's mm -hmm. a certain, there's different time frames where if things pass, yeah. uh, if the governor's not signing it, then, or if the governor does nothing, yeah. then it will pass through, yes. mm -hmm. and then there's yeah. a, a different time where if the governor does nothing, it won't pass. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what the time frames are yeah. there, but... Well, that's so. right. Well, I, I was wondering that because it seems strange to me that, um, you know, no liberty. Is that I know that's very important, um, but no governor at all. To me, it seems. I, I guess it's because of my age. I'm used to um, all law and order, and uh, you know, people in charge. And so sure, and I don't object to. We, that's my question. How would we function with no governor at all? Well, uh, like I said, the state house and the state senate could continue oh, to. Would, oh, you they could continue to legislate and do oh, do see. their thing. Oh. They don't really need to have the governor there. Oh, I um, see what you mean. Yeah. But I, you, maybe what you're asking about was you, you mentioned law and order. Mm -hmm. um, I support having police enforcing laws where there's a victim. If we're talking about murder, mm -hmm. rape arson, property mm -hmm. destruction, mm -hmm. there's a victim in those cases. And that's what our police should be looking at. That's what they should be spending mm -hmm. their time on. Rather than going after college students for having an open container, walking from one, I mean, I live in Keene, there's a college there, and, and so uh, I, I go downtown, and in fact, they just started yesterday. So I'll be out there this weekend giving uh, the students know your rights information, how to, how to interact with the police, because unfortunately, when we're growing up, we're taught that the police are your friends. And then when you get old enough, you become a teenager and into your early 20s, you realize that the police are actually out to get you. And, uh, and that's, a, that's a really that shocking thought thing. thought that they have out there? That's what, that's what the reality is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen the police going after college girls just because they're walking from one house to another with a beer in their hand. And wow. that's, to me, that's not a criminal act. It's a, it's a kid stuff. <laughs> it's not right. I mean, maybe drinking heavily is not a smart idea. No. no, no. But drinking heavily is its own punishment, usually. Uh, yes, right? yes. You, know, you, you uh, wake up so. the next day yeah. and you, know, you don't know what happened or you're hurting mm -hmm. or whatever. And so you don't need to go to jail on top of that yeah. or have to, have to pay the court system mm -hmm. hundreds of dollars. So if those officers who are enforcing the open container laws were instead re like actually looking into real crimes yeah. with a victim yeah. that would be something that I would support well because you can't change kids you know you just can't sit them in a chair no. and say don't move and don't do this no. and you cannot do that and they know they're not going to change them mm -hmm. it's just it's just a way to extract hundreds of dollars from each one of them if you sit into if you sit in the uh, uh, any district court in New Hampshire go into an arraignment and just sit there and, and watch for a morning. Watch how many people get called up there who aren't a domestic violence person. They're not somebody who actually committed any kind of real violent crime. It's marijuana possession, alcohol possession, marijuana possession, alcohol possession. I mean, almost all morning long. And so it's almost like you can hear the cash register ringing in oh. the courts because it's $400 here, $500 there. Well, that's but, so a lot by, of money. Right, but by the time the, the morning's over, the court's taken in $10,000 those students or lot, lots of poor people are also targeted for these laws they're out hundreds of dollars a piece and if you're poor you can't afford that please tell me about it yeah. <laughs> i watch that all the time but because these people are carrying a can or a bottle of beer whatever it is, is that grounds to stop them or, or well the police can uh at any time and i'm a uh, i know i'm not an attorney but i know a thing or two about uh, interacting with the police the police have the right 
to come up and ask you a question if you're on the street. So if you're a college student walking from one point mm -hmm. to another and an officer comes up to you and asks you a question, he has a full right to do that. Mm -hmm. Now you also have the right to not answer the question, but most young people don't know that. And so what an officer will do is let's say, you know, you don't know it, but this could be vodka in this bottle. It's not, it's water. Mm -hmm. But the officer, if I'm walking down the street, may say, let me see that bottle. Or something like that. Does he have say, a right to do that? Well, he has a right to say, or he's like, he might say like, let me ask you if I, or, um, I have to ask you if I can see that bottle. He'll say it in a way where it's kind of, yeah. it sounds like an order, because he's got a gun on his mm -hmm, hip. Mm -hmm, yeah. Uh, he's got an authoritative. That's threatening. That's right, threatening he's got an authoritative way. demeanor. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to ask you to hand that over. Now that sounds like I'm telling you to hand it over, yeah. but I'm actually asking you. And most people don't know enough to say, well, officer, are you asking me or are you ordering me? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then they'll have to say, well, I'm asking you. Well, be because they can't search this without a warrant yeah. um, unless you give them permission. Oh, I see. And so yeah. when you hand it over to the officer, you've just given them permission to conduct a search on you. So the officer then oh. opens it up. Oh. oh, I smell alcohol. Oh. You're under arrest. Oh, see, that's not. See, I think sometimes. It's a dirty trick. Sometimes officers become too managerial and say, well, you know, I'll get this one, this is cost money, we'll go to court. Of course, they get paid for attending the court session. They get paid overtime. Yeah, see, so that's, that's, that would be one thing that they'd be thinking of, too. I, I can't see stop. But see, I'm not for stopping young people. I think young people are young people, and they're going to do what they want to do. Let's, uh, let's stop the young people who are breaking and entering. Yeah, let's stop yeah, the young people yeah. who are uh, drinking and driving. Mm -hmm. um, those are, you know, real crimes mm -hmm. with a potential victim. Yeah. Now, let me ask you something. Do you think uh, uh, taking... Uh, cannabis or whatever it, you know that the young people take. Do you think that becomes addictive? I know nothing about that. Do you think that becomes addictive? You could take too much over the years? So that's an interesting question. Um, I have used cannabis a number of times, probably more times than I can count. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have quit using that's smoking uh, it. cannabis. Yeah. Smoking it or vaporizing. There's a newer way to Is consume that it. Sometimes they have a new thing where they they inhale something and blow it out, is that? Correct, yeah. yeah. You'll, it looks like smoke a little bit, mm -hmm. but it's not the same thing. It's like water vapor when mm -hmm. you're boiling a pot of yeah. water. It's mm -hmm. the same kind of I've idea. I've seen those. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, some people will say that it's safer to, to vaporize than it is to is smoke. Is that against the law to do that? Y uh, anything with cannabis in New Hampshire is, is against the law, even though it's a plant that grows from the but earth. But if you're not under the influence, let's say, if you if you just had, you just smoked it, but you're fine, do they have a right to arrest you or? Well they, can only, well, they can only arrest you if they know that you have it. Um, so no. it's, not il it's not illegal to walk down the street after having smoked cannabis, but it would be illegal to walk down the street while smoking cannabis. It's the possession, oh, oh, yeah. it's the possession of the, the drug. Yeah, well, it's isn't that generally against the law to walk down the street smoking You can walk down marijuana. the street smoking a cigarette, and yeah, that's but not completely marijuana. legal. Correct. It's illegal to, to possess marijuana. Yeah. Um, and that's unfortunate. But how would they know that you're just not smoking a regular cigarette? Well, they, would, uh, they wouldn't know by looking at you. They would have to use their, uh, their nose to detect S the odor mm -hmm. uh, of cannabis, and then they would have probable cause to possibly conduct a search yeah, but they could, on you. They could, uh, you know, concoct those kind of things. And sure, they can tell lies. And, there's and, really and no I'm sorry to say that I know that that's happened. But right. That's there's no bad. punishment for them no. when they, when they oh, do no, that. Oh, no, but there's punishment for you if the, you're the one going in. That's correct. Um, so, you know, I don't think that that should be a crime. Again, there is no victim there. Mm -hmm. You could argue that the person is victimizing themselves by, by doing a drug. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we should have the freedom to make those choices for our own bodies mm -hmm. and suffer whatever the consequences are. So to go back to your earlier question about, uh, about cannabis, um, I do have a lot of experience with mm -hmm. it. It is a relatively benign substance. Um, and in fact, it has helped people get off harder drugs. So one of the oh, most important issues, mm -hmm. yes, uh, one of the most important issues in New Hampshire today, of course, is the heroin uh, oh, crisis. that's tragic. It mm -hmm. is absolutely uh, tragic. I used to have a roommate when I lived in Florida more than a decade ago uh, who was an opiate addict. Now, of course, as you know, uh, or uh, heroin is not the only opiate out there. No. There's uh, morphine, there's oxycodone. Uh, the new fentanyl. There's all kinds yeah. of, uh, mm -hmm. of opiates out there. And they're very similar to mm -hmm. heroin. There really isn't that much of a difference between them. So my friend was addicted to oxycodone, which is the well, legal... That, that's prescribed or, sometimes or, by doctors. Yeah. Correct. He mm -hmm. wasn't getting it from a prescription. Mm -hmm. He was buying it on the black market. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was injecting uh, that oh, into well his veins. Worse. And he ended up... Um, 
thankfully he's still alive and he's doing well today. Oh, he, he ended up beating that because he went on what was called the marijuana maintenance program, which was where he started using cannabis instead of using heroin and was able to oh, get better, off of yeah, his, yeah. his addiction. Um, cannabis, of course, also is used medicinally. As you know, we have a medical program mm -hmm. here in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. It's not the best medical program, but at least we have it. Yeah. it. It took the government way too long to get it yeah, started. That, that helped a lot of people that were uh, very ill. In fact, a physician told me um, he has seen people being treated for that in, in uh, there's a special hospital they have. Uh, if you saw those people that needed it, you wouldn't deny them that. They right. Um, I, and that some of the people who use uh, cannabis for medical purposes, it's very persuasive, their stories. They'll tell you that uh, they, can, they can take one or two tokes off of a joint or a, a pipe and that that solves their issue. They're mm -hmm. not doing it to get high. No, no. They're doing it to help themselves feel better. And if better. you have a very bad back problem, I've been told by friends that that helps a great deal. Yep. I was just talking with uh, a, a fellow s state representative, Joe Lachance, who is oh, a... Oh, he's on the same committee with me. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, he, nice man. Great guy. Mm -hmm. um, we interviewed him on my radio show over oh. the weekend. I was at the New Hampshire Hemp Fest. Oh, that's and nice. And he was there. And we spoke with him for about two hours, and he's a former uh, New Hampshire police officer. Oh, is he? And it was interesting, his story, because he, you know, when he started, he really believed in the war on drugs. And then he started to see that when he was arresting young people for drug possession, that it wasn't actually helping them. It was making their life worse. Um, and so he ended up after he left law enforcement, he very recently joined a group called Law Enforcement Against Prohibition, which um, is a very interesting group. And I, I think you, you know, if you're, if you're looking for guests, I'd love to suggest them. Oh, I would ask him to come down because you know they're they're mostly former law enforcement officers, uh, in, including some police chiefs mm -hmm. and detectives and mm -hmm. uh, state police, who've now realized that the the whole war on drugs, not just cannabis, but the entire prohibition, mm -hmm. is a terrible idea. Which is something that we should have realized after we tried alcohol prohibition as mm -hmm. a society back uh, almost a hundred years ago mm -hmm. now uh, that that was a terrible idea it just made things worse people didn't stop drinking it no, just went no, underground no. and became more dangerous well you know it's that's strange that you should be talking about that because for me um, I don't know can you become addicted to too much uh, marijuana? Is, is it like uh, the other drugs? Can you become addicted to too much of it? I think that anyone who has, um, let's call it an addictive personality, can become addicted to cannabis. Oh, but generally it's bad. not addictive. If mm -hmm. you look at the studies about cannabis, mm -hmm. It's not addictive at all as a, as a substance. But if there's a, the kind of person who has the mindset of getting hooked on things that they really like, well, then certainly. I mean, just like anything, someone can get addicted to watching television. Oh. Someone mm -hmm. can get addicted to eating ice cream mm -hmm. every night. Um, so it's like that. So someone with an addictive personality could, but generally, no, cannabis isn't addictive. Well, I've quit it multiple times. It's been times. said that it's the gateway to drugs. Do you believe that? The Institute of Medicine did a study. This is the government's own, the federal government's own Institute of Medicine did a study back, I believe it was in 1999, and their intention was to look at the question of whether or not it was a gateway. Mm -hmm. And they determined that it is not a gateway. Oh, good. But if, if it is a gateway, the reason why is because it's, in pro, uh, it's a prohibited product. So what I mean by that is if there's a drug dealer and they've got a bunch of different drugs. They've got cannabis, they've got mm -hmm. heroin, they've got mm -hmm. you know crack cocaine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, then that drug dealer has the incentive to push those other products. The more expensive ones. And because the user of cannabis is in the black market and they can't just go to Walgreens mm -hmm. or down to the corner store and mm -hmm. purchase cannabis, they have to get it from the drug dealer, they're more likely to encounter the harder drugs that may be more right, dangerous right. to them. But the drug itself is in no way, shape, or form a gateway drug. Well, that's very, very interesting. Um, <laughs> you have some very unique thoughts. You know, Thank you, you know that. I, I was that. amazed in, in reading, you, you know, your bio. I said, my goodness, I would love to talk to that young man, it's because I'm not in a world with, where I would exist where that is available. But right. uh, and I don't know anybody that take. I know someone's taken it for medicinal purposes mm -hmm. and and work very, very nice. So. I've been uh, I've been uh, into the underground drug world. I know what uh, the people are like there, and most of them are just uh, good folks who are using drugs responsibly. Because there's a difference between a drug addict and a drug user. Yes, and yes. that's one of the things that the the law doesn't make mm -hmm. any kind of mm -hmm. distinctions for. Mm -hmm. The law says if you possess whatever drug we're talking about, mm -hmm. it's illegal. You're going to jail. 
but that doesn't mean the person's an addict. Mm -hmm. Some people, most people who use drugs are just using them for recreational yes, purposes. Yes. And they have it under control. They're able to go to work. Mm -hmm. I used to know <coughs> a contractor in Florida who would tell me that he would rather hire a crack addict than he would hire uh, an alcoholic because the alcoholic's always calling in sick yeah. because they're hungover, yeah, yeah. whereas that crack addict yeah. needs to get more crack, yeah. so yeah. they're there yeah. at yeah. 6 in the morning. I mean, it's a crazy thing to think yeah. about, but, you know, yeah. that's... That's life. Okay, very interesting conversation. Well, now you're going to be running for office, so would you yeah. like to address our viewers and, and uh, ask for assistance in your campaign? Uh, we have a sure, wonderful camera right here. Would you tell them how they can reach you, phone, email? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Ian Freeman. I'm running as a Democrat uh, in the primary here, and I'm also a member of the New Hampshire Liberty Party. You can reach me through the New Hampshire Liberty Party website, nhliberty.info. Uh, my phone number is 603-513-2449. My email address is ian, that's I-A-N, at freetalklive.com. Uh, I'm not accepting campaign contributions. Uh, my campaign budget so far has been about $5. So, but would, you, would you like to have some help in the polls on Election Day? Maybe someone in town would like to help you out? You know, if someone wants, if someone wants to help me, then they, they, they should do whatever it is they want to do. If they want to make a sign, if they want to go out to the poll, polling locations... And uh, stand they, for you? They should do whatever they feel inspired to do. I have no campaign staff. Uh, I'm not, like I said, I'm not accepting contributions. I'm <laughs> trying to spend as little money as possible because I believe that politics, for the most part, is a waste of money. I mean, yeah. I know that there's a uh, one of the Republican candidates I heard, uh, he's polling about as well as I am in the Democratic race, and he spent uh, uh, three quarters of a million dollars oh or my something goodness. like that. And it's like, you know, it's well, to me it's not worth spending any money I don't think you have on. to do that, Dolly. I think you're a very <laughs> nice young man. So I've spent about $5 on postage so far and whatever the gas it took me to, uh, you. to get very economical. <laughs> That's going to take you far when you do that. Oh, it's wonderful. Thank you. Well, I want to thank you for joining Has us Has it today. already been a half an hour? Yes, this it is. So much and fun. I want to thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to seeing you on the trail. I'll look forward to seeing you at the State House, oh, too, I because I, I'm in well, there all I hope the time. You'll come, if you see me, come over and say hi. Mary, it's been an Very absolute nice pleasure. Very nice meeting you. I was thank interested so in meeting much. you today and talking to you because I, I don't understand, you know, all these things that come up. I'm a little bit older than you are, but uh, it's very interesting. Your, your I'm always discussion. happy to answer any questions. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Thanks, Mary. Oh, I hope I see you with the polls. I look forward to it. Oh, you're a very nice young man. Thank you so much for joining us today. Stay tuned for our next guest. <laughs>